Hey, what's going on guys? 018 Seth Shadow here. So, with my new schedule, it's a little bit it's a little bit interesting given that originally the way I had this planned was since Bushiro does a lot of their live streams for card announcements on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the original idea was to get right in on those after the announcements, although it just made the times a bit wonky because then I'm kind of following their live stream at whatever times that they want to have them, and sometimes they change them. So instead, I've just kind of made it a in-between doing it on Mondays and Wednesdays, and potentially Fridays, depending on what Bushiroad announces. So unfortunately, you're not going to be getting like too much real time for me in terms of the videos, but I will be looking to at least do more posts of that information in as I get time. But let's go ahead and get into the market watch talking about yesterday's talking about yesterday's Bushiroad live stream where they announced some new support for Solar Iron and for Eugene. And for those of you who don't know Solar Iron, no surprise given that it is a new card from Dragon Masquerade, which is the newest set to have come out. And unfortunately, it just does not get as much attention as many of the other ride lines in this set. Between Hexor, between Zorga, between Gandiva, of course. So Ryron's kind of just sitting at the sitting at the end here. This card is almost like Hexor, where you're supposed to be top decking, stacking your deck to be able to determine what your top card is and you'll get additional power bonuses for guessing the correct card, kind of like how Magus used to be in the original format. And then you can also get some more cards when this card attacks the Vanguard as well for multi-attack, so it allows you to do four attacks in one turn, in addition to stacking your deck on top of that. But this card is cheap, <clears throat> easy pickup for a dollar or less right now, and we'll probably get a little bit of value as time passes, but we'll just have to see how good Sol Rairon gets with its new support. Eugene, on top of getting some new support cards, also got a new ride line option, apparently. Which, after reading it, it's not a bad skill, but I don't think it's capable of saving Eugene from its current rut. Although the SP has been seeing movement recently, players have bought this for close to $10, and there's only one near mint listing left at under $10 before we get to $13 to $15 plus. So if you're looking to max out Eugene, well, uh, you're probably going to have to wait for a little bit. Probably not for long. I don't anticipate this to stay too high. Then I want to talk about Radlina, particularly because of the triple rare. I've been seeing this card fluctuate between the five and ten dollar mark quite often now, and we are not getting set eleven until September. On top of that, Roroa has not been doing too much, even with set eleven, when it comes to Japan right now. Although we did also get the promo announcements for July, which are Full art versions of cards like Resolute Pair of Eyes, which is what goes into this deck, which could also be fueling this immediate gain in value since Roroa is still a pretty cool deck to play. But Radlina is currently set sitting at about $9 and mostly has been selling for just over 5 if you take a look at a lot of the last listings. Sometimes they have been selling for 9 though. So it's really an in-between here, but $10 feels like the high for this card, and any higher than that may not be worth the pickup at this point. Then I want to take a quick look at the effect heal triggers from Lyrical Set 3, basically the one that that gives you extra shield on re-standing units, which is two of us rhyme, and the one that gives you extra shield for extra crits, which is two of us flow. So the thing is, two of us flow, the crit-based one, is seeing a buyout. The double R is already sold out, and the FR only has two listings as low as 35. If we take a look at that history, 
The FR has sold for $10 recently, and that's about all I can say on that front. And then when you take a look at the double R, that one has been trending upward for the last months, two months, and has been selling. The last sales were all four ish dollars. So, yeah. I chalk it up to Gondiva being a big deck here, and Messiah is also something that this can be used against. But crit based vanguards, and then of course, this can be used against Eva as well. It's far more common to see this crit, this heal trigger as shield as opposed to the restand one. Dearly Flowers Elise, one of the big support cards for Medio, who I've talked about a few times. But with set 4 Lyrical on the horizon, and no reprints apparently announced for the set, this card has been seeing a bit of a buyout on the Triple R side, probably for anticipation of more Medial support to buff the deck even further. Of course, the FFR is still sitting around $18, which for an FFR is not too bad, especially for a set like Lyrical Set 3 that I don't think it has that many printings in comparison to others. But again, the Triple R only has three listings starting at $7.24, and more recent sales were $3 to $4. So hopefully we'll get a few popping in at around $5 at least, but I anticipate that this will just get some hype, hype gains for a little while. And then you've got Immense Aptitude Relier, which is powerful support. This card allows for extra drive checks and also empties out your soul to enable powerful based abilities. But the triple rare for this one, first off, the FFR is out of stock right now, but the triple R is up. Granted, it only sold for dollars recently, so ultimately it just got bought out to this point of sellers now trying to get rid of them for $10. Will it sell for $10? I don't want to think so. Hermenia is a pretty nice deck, but it, I mean, Hermenia is getting a retrain in set four, which is anticipation for this card to get better. So we will have to see what happens on that front, but the time to pick them up cheap is gone. Just a quick look at set two on their front triggers to give an idea of where prices are going with those. Blaze Made in Parama, Alpac, and Enpiro. These three for Dragon Empire, Cater Sanctuary, and Brantgate are currently the biggest front triggers to pick up from set 2 right now, with Parama hovering between 8 to 10, same with Alpac, and Empiro is hovering around $7. But when it comes to Natalia and Frenzied Harris, which are Dark States and Stoichio respectively, these are cheap. Natalia is only $3, and then Frenzied Harris is about $2 when you're rounding up these prices. And so, yeah, in terms of those front triggers, they're just, they're just not popular at this point and are not really moving anywhere. The big three right now are the ones I mentioned before. Just keep that in mind if you are looking to build your decks. And at some point, Maybe this week, I'll want to have a quick discussion in regards to triggers in general as we go along looking at something like this, where I've talked about Barbazon a number of times because this card has fluctuated so much and has seen so many value gains, and we're back at the point where the hollow foil is almost out of stock and only has one listing at $12 right now. And it has sold for $13 for individual copies recently, so... Yeah, as we get closer and closer to Orphis's reveal for set 12, I anticipate that this card is going to see another spike, with the SP also going back up above 60. And the same can be said of Cardinal Prima Nabilium, which is the heal trigger from set 1, also intended for Orphis. I mean, I've talked about it before, Cardinal is a namesake, just like how Diabolus is a namesake that works with Viamont's Bruce, so you do have to keep in mind that Nobilium might actually be a necessary heal trigger, depending on whether or not Orphus Mask does require you to use Cardinal cards. I would not think so, because it's kind of rare for Bushiro to do something like this, but it could happen. 
In any case, price is $2 for the common at the base, $4.71 for the hollow baseline, and then the SP is over $42 right now with only four listings left. There are a good amount of listings on the hollow and common left, but they're still only in the tens, so just keep that in mind. On top of that, you've also got Brachioforce. Thanks to Gondiva, this card has been seeing a nice little bump where the hollow foil is gone, and despite the fact that there are listings for the common, there are only 12, which I find kind of alarming. First off, Brachioforce is from set 3, which is a very, very, very easy set to pick up given its high printing rate and its low price point. Again, I say high printing rate just based on my experience. I don't know if it's actually printed that heavily, but it seems so. In any case, this card is widely available for 15 cents in terms of, like there are 12 listings at, 12 copies at 15 cents from one listing. But after that, it's a pretty, it's pretty much a 50 cent card. And with only 12 listings to go, it's just going, going, gone at this point, so. If you need to pick up your Brachio Forces, I'd suggest doing so. And of course, the card that really enables this is Gondiva, who I didn't cover on Monday, because, well, I'm pretty sure it's pr well been covered to heck. But Gondiva is well over $20 now. At Sneak Preview, it was alarming to see how this card was as low as $7 at one point, because I was certain it would get this high at the very least, and here we are. So, picking them up at 23 is not too bad, I suppose, because I can't see this card going further down as it continues to get stronger and stronger as time goes on. Then, a little pivot to something I never really covered, which is Token Rambo. Bushiroad has been announcing new Token Rambo support, and they are now released in Japan and making some strides, so I just wanted to cover a few cards here. Particularly Shokudakiri Mitsada. He's not very expensive, but when I was looking at best selling, it was interesting to see that this card popped up on the front page for some reason. But the Triple R is available for $2 right now, and when we actually go to look at the big one that never that seems to have a decent price, it's Mikazuki Munichika who is currently a $23 card for its triple rare. Now, unfortunately, I don't know too much about Token Rambao, other than the fact that it works based off of how much damage you've got to do certain skills. And then they have a variety of different skills, so hard to pinpoint. But for those of you who know Token Rambao better than me, feel free to comment on anything that I may have missed out here. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys later.